I often have people uh, over to my home observatory here and uh, during the course of the evening somebody will inevitably say something like, gee, I'd get into astral photography too if I had a nice observatory like the one that you have here. And when people say such things, I can't help think back on all the many years that I carried on my love of astrophotography with no observatory. In fact, that observatory you see in the background didn't happen in my life until I was 50 years old. And so in, in the spirit of showing people that you can do a whole lot with stuff you probably already have around home and just haven't really thought uh, of using it for astrophotography, I'd like to show you my basic astrophotography setup here. And I'd like to walk you through the equipment and how I take astro photos with a simple photo tripod and a DSLR camera. So let's get started. Okay, I'd like to show you a little bit more of my setup up close. Again, the photo tripod is nothing special. Something I've had for 35 years, something you could probably pick up secondhand for a few dollars. In fact, a brand new one online wouldn't cost you much more than that. Sitting on top of that, is this ball head adjustment and this is very helpful when you're trying to point things at a you know specific place in the sky i've got it kind of tight right now but you can really move that around and adjust your camera to where you want it to be in the sky um, you can pick these up very um, inexpensively online many of the online sites in fact it's kind of funny if you compare they all kind of look the same and in fact they probably are most of them made in the same place in china so uh, be careful in checking the prices so that you can, you know, uh, get the best, uh, you know, price. On top, you see this little gizmo here. And all it is, it was some hard plastic. It's, I think, I believe it's actually nylon that I had bought to create casters for the original dome on my um, observatory over there that was over a thousand pounds. And all I did is I uh, enlarged the axle hole a little bit so that it would uh, fit this uh, standard green laser pointer here. And I made the hole just a little bit larger so that when I pressed the button on the laser pr uh, pointer down, it would engage the, the laser pointer. And so, and then when I'm done, I can just push it and it, it rides in there. So I got a little hot shoe adjustment off another attachment I had, sawed it off and glued it in the end of that. And the interference fit uh, works just really nice on my camera. So that's that. And uh, let me move a little bit closer to the camera now and I'll show you my settings. Okay, here are my settings. Uh, I've set the focus to manual. And you would adjust that uh, up on the front of the lens there. It's on bulb setting so that I have the freedom with the intervalometer, which I'll describe in a moment, to set my exposure times. Uh, I've set the ISO at 1600. That seems to be what works best from my site for, you know, five second exposures. Uh, I have a custom white balance because of my uh, custom sensor that I have, in, uh, excuse me, filter that I have over my sensor in the camera. And very important, I shoot in the RAW format. You want to do that so you don't lose data. Uh, if you shoot it in uh, JPEG, uh, it's going to uh, compress the files and you're going to lose precious data. And when you're taking photographs of very faint things in the sky, you want to have all of the information that you can. So those are the basic settings there. Now, one thing that is very, very important when you're taking photographs with a DSLR or any camera is focus. Now, on my large telescope, in the observatory, I use a Botanoff mask, and uh, that's very uh, effective at getting a perfect focus. I even have a smaller Botanoff mask that I can use on the front of this DSLR here. I can actually slide it right over the top, but I have found that just as effective for my uh, use is that I will just uh, adjust the focus here and take a picture, adjust it, and I'll rack it in and out until I find the point where the stars are the very smallest. And then, as you can see, I just take a piece of cellophane fain tape and I just tape it over uh, the, the lens there so that it doesn't move during the night. And that has seemed to work really well for me, so I don't really think that I need to do anything else with that. Now, you can use a remote uh, shutter trip button that comes with lots of DSLRs 
and uh, if it allows it to just hold it down for as many seconds as your exposure is or to trip off the five second exposure you've set in your camera that's great and I have done that but I have an intervalometer, and so what I'm going to do is uh, show you a little bit closer what the intervalometer is and what it does. Okay, this is an intervalometer, and it plugs into the side of the camera. There's a port in the side of DSLRs that allows you to plug this right in and control the shutter remotely. And you can find these again online. Uh, when they first came out, they were really quite expensive, but I think I picked this one up for $20. And again, I have to chuckle a little bit because as you check out the different ones for sale, they all pretty much look the same. And again, they were probably all made in the same place in China. So the neat thing about this is, let me just turn it on here, is that you can set the delay. You can see I've got it at two seconds before the whole process starts. Uh, how long do you want the exposure to be? You can see I set that at five seconds. I was shooting with my 55 millimeter lens and uh, you know there are formulas out there that show how long you can keep a, a DSLR lens open on a fixed tripod before the stars start trailing and that was about the limit for 55 millimeters uh, for my Canon T5i. The next one over is the interval between exposures and I've set that at two to allow things to just settle down a little bit inside the camera and then the number of exposures you can see that I've set that at 25 and then uh, the final one is I have a little musical tone uh, for each exposure now that might drive some of the people out there crazy uh, but <laughs> I've always liked music so I guess a little music while I'm doing my astrophotography doesn't hurt so that's really the simple setup here and with an intervalometer you can just set the number of exposures get it running and then you can kind of enjoy the night sky, which is what I do while it's uh, shooting. And after 25 exposures or so, I use my little uh, pointer on top, again, to reorient the camera and make sure that I'm getting the same place in the sky so that when I go to stack the exposures, they'll all line up really well. You know, and here's the great thing about using the uh, intervalometer here to take your exposures for you is that while that's happening you're not sitting here having to trip the you know the camera for every exposure by the way I have done that uh, hundreds of exposures before with a remote press button and so it can be done but uh, you know once using an intervalometer you can uh, basically grab a nice pair of binoculars here and uh, you can enjoy the night sky. In fact, uh, last night I was really enjoying all the uh, clusters and uh, uh, in this part of the sky, Cassiopeia and uh, Cygnus were where I was shooting and uh, actually enjoying the Andromeda Galaxy. And just as a side note, uh, in terms of uh, budget astronomy, I picked up these 10 by 50 binoculars online for, I believe it was $30. And with a set of 10 by 50 binoculars, you can see many of the Messier objects. Uh, last night I was enjoying the Andromeda Galaxy. Uh, it gave very, very good views through these 10 by 50 binoculars. So it's pretty hard to beat a night like that under the stars where your camera's taking beautiful pictures and you're sitting back enjoying the, you know, quietness and uh, the luxuriant darkness of the night and uh, having a pair of binoculars to look up and see all the beautiful objects in the sky while your camera's taking the pictures. So what I'd like to do is show you what I was able to do with this setup last night um, and what you would be able to do if you had a like setup of your own. Well, there you have it. Not real fancy, 
by any stretch of the imagination, but still very capable of taking beautiful images of the night sky. You know, people are always waiting till someday to do the things that their heart uh, is longing to do. And uh, I've heard so many people say, gee, I'm going to get into astrophotography someday when, you know, I can buy me a nice refractor and a, you know, a skywatcher mount or whatever. And that's great to have dreams. Dreams are what propel us forward in life. But when we get so hung up on those dreams that we forget to live today while we're working on those dreams, it can become problematic. One of my favorite stories uh, that kind of illustrates this is uh, uh, a story that took place uh, in AD uh, 79, August 24th. The fair citizens of Pompeii had just sat down to enjoy their uh, major meal of the day, which at that time uh, by tradition took place at, at noontime. Uh, Mount Vesuvius violently erupted, and you all know the history that this, uh, you know, rained down pumice and ash uh, to the extent that uh, eventually the city was covered in seven meters of ash. Uh, Vesuvius unleashed a, a pyroclastic flow of superheated uh, poisonous gas and uh, basically killed everyone who was left with uh, the first inhale that they took of that mixture. Well, when they excavated that site in modern times, uh, ironically, this was found in, engraved in the wall of a public building. Enjoy life while you have it, for tomorrow is uncertain. I've always used that as my mantra to live life fully and to get up each day and to uh, get the most out of that day, as the uh, saying says, carpe diem. Uh, none of us has a lease on life or knows how long we are going to be on this planet. so. Why not enjoy every day to the fullest? And uh, back to the topic at hand here. Why wait some day to have a, you know, a, a telescope that may cost you thousands of dollars uh, to enjoy the hobby of astrophotography when you can get started right now with probably stuff that you have in your closet at home? So in that spirit, I'd like you all to, uh, uh, rather, I'd like to encourage you all to get your stuff out and to test it and, and see what you might be able to do with the stuff that you already have at home without having to uh, purchase really much of anything else to enjoy the hobby of astrophotography. And as always, clear skies everyone.